This is Mrs. Appiot with Lesson 5 from Module 5, Grade 7, Chance Experiments with Outcomes That Are Not Equally Likely. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students calculate the probabilities for chance experiments that do not have equally likely outcomes. Pause the video and copy the essential question, how do you calculate the probability of an event when the outcomes are not equally likely? In previous lessons, you learned that when the outcome in a sample space are equally likely, the probability of an event is the number of outcomes in the event divided by the number of outcomes in the sample space. However, when the outcomes in the sample space are not equally likely, we need to take a different approach. In example one, when Jenna goes to the farmer's market, she usually buys bananas. The number of bananas she might buy and their probabilities are shown in the table. Question 1. What is the probability that Jenna buys exactly three bananas? We can find that data just by looking at the table. The column for number of bananas is 3 and the probability that she buys three bananas is 2 tenths. So there we go. Question B. What is the probability that Jenna does not buy any bananas? Well, that would be buying zero bananas. And the probability that that happens is one-tenth. Question C. What is the probability that Jenna buys more than three bananas? More than three means that she would either buy four or five. The probability that she buys four bananas is 0 0.2, or 2 tenths. The probability that she buys five bananas is 3 tenths. The probability that she buys four or five bananas is the sum of those two probabilities. 2 tenths plus 3 tenths is 5 tenths. Question D. What is the probability that Jenna buys at least three bananas? At least three means that she has either bought three or four or five. The probability that she bought three or four or five. So we'll see the probability for three is two tenths plus the probability of four bananas is two tenths plus the probability of five bananas is three tenths. We add two tenths plus two tenths plus three tenths and we get seven tenths. 0 0.7. What is the probability that Jenna doesn't buy exactly three? If she doesn't buy exactly three, one of the ways to solve that problem, a very efficient way to solve that problem, is to subtract the probability that she does from one. So we start with the number one and we subtract from that the probability that she does buy three. The probability that she does buy three is two tenths. So one minus two tenths is eight tenths, 0 0.8. Again, we want the probability that she's not buying exactly three. So we find the probability of buying exactly three, and then we subtract it from one. Question F. Notice that the sum of the probabilities in the table is, all right, well, we need to calculate what that is. So let's go ahead and add those up. When you're adding decimals, remember to line them up. So we have one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth plus two tenths plus two tenths plus three tenths. And we add all that together, we get three, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that gives us exactly one. Ten tenths equals one whole. Add this to your notes. When you add the probabilities of all the possible outcomes, the result is always 1. 
when you add the probabilities of all the possible outcomes the result will always equal 1. Then the probabilities of something not occurring is this. Add this to your notes. The probability of an event not occurring is, well, we just calculated it up here. It's 1 minus the probability that it does occur is 1 minus the probability that it does occur. Exercises 1 and 2. This page is your turn. Go ahead and pause the video, complete the page, and then resume the video when you are ready to check your work. Question A, two servings of fruit. The probability is 28 hundredths. Question B, more than two would be three or four. You add those probabilities and you get 51 hundredths. Question C, at least two servings, so you would count two or three or four. You add all three of those numbers together and you get a sum of 79 hundredths. Question two, the probability that Rick does not eat exactly two servings. For that, you subtract from one the probability that he does eat exactly two. The probability of eating exactly two is 0.28. And so we subtract 1 minus 0.28 and we get 0 0.72, 72 hundredths. Example 2. Luis works in an office and the phone rings occasionally. The number of phone calls he receives in the afternoon and their probabilities are given in the table below. Find the probability that Luis receives three or four phone calls. We can find that data from the table. The probability of three or four. The probability of three is right here, one third. The probability of four phone calls is one ninth. The probability that one or the other occurring is the sum of those two fractions. Notice that we have different denominators. The common denominator for three and nine is the least common multiple. which is nine. So we rewrite one third as ninths. One third is equivalent to three ninths. Three ninths plus one ninth is equal to four ninths. So the probability of receiving three or four phone calls is the sum and the answer is four ninths. Question B, the probability that Lewis receives fewer than two phone calls. Fewer than two would be either one or zero. So the probability of either zero or one phone call. The probability of zero phone calls is one sixth. The probability of one phone call is one sixth. The probability of one or the other happening is the sum of those two numbers. One sixth plus one sixth is equal to two sixths and that simplifies to one third. Question C. Find the probability that Lewis receives two or few, two or fewer phone calls. Okay, so two or fewer. Two or fewer would be two or one or zero. 
the probability of two phone calls. Let's erase these. The probability of two phone calls is 2 ninths. The probability of one phone call is 1 sixth. The probability of zero phone calls is 1 sixth. The probability that you get either 2 or 1 or 0 is the sum of those two or those three fractions. Our common denominator for 9 and 6 is the least common multiple, which is 18. So we'll rewrite these three fractions using 18 as our common denominator. 2 ninths is equal to 4 eighteenths. 1 sixth is equal to 3 eighteenths. 4 eighteenths plus 3 eighteenths plus 3 eighteenths. Add your numerators. That's going to give us 10 eighteenths. That can be simplified. The greatest common factor is 2. Divide by 2 and you get 5 ninths for a final answer. Question D. Find the probability that Lewis does not receive four phone calls. Okay, so our key word here is not four phone calls. The quick and efficient way to find that answer is to find the probability that D does receive four phone calls and subtract it from one. So that's going to be one minus the probability of exactly four calls. And we can get that data from the chart. Four calls has a probability of one ninth. So it's one minus one ninth. One is equal to nine ninths. Nine ninths minus one ninth is eight ninths. The probability of not receiving four phone calls is eight ninths. Exercise three. This is your turn. Go ahead and pause the video. Complete the rest of the page. Resume the video when you're ready to check your work. Question A. Three heads of broccoli has a probability of one-fourth. Question B. One minus the probability that he does buy three. So one minus one-fourth is three-fourths. And remember that one is equal to four-fourths. So four-fourths minus one-fourth is three-fourths. Question C. More than one head of broccoli. So you count two heads of broccoli, three heads of broccoli, and four heads of broccoli. And then you add those fractions together. Notice that you need a common denominator for one of those fractions. One-fourth needs to be rewritten in twelfths. One-fourth is equivalent to three-twelfths. Then add your numerators, you get 9 twelfths, and when you simplify, your answer is 3 fourths. Question D. Buy at least 3 heads of broccoli. So you have to count 3 or 4, and then you add those probabilities together. 1 fourth plus 1 twelfth is equal to, in simplest form, 1 third. Exercises 4 through 7. The diagram below shows a spinner designed like the face of a clock. The sectors of the spinner are colored red, blue, green, and yellow. The pointer is the segment going straight up and down right here. Write your answers as fractions in lowest terms. Find the probability that the pointer stops in the following colors. So our first question, A, is the probability of red. So we see that there is one section of red, but take a look at the sections. Notice that there's a higher probability of getting blue than red because there are more sections of blue. Now, technically, if you look at that, you think, well, there's one section for red and one section for blue, but they are not equal segments or sections. So what we want to do is we want to take this clock and we want to divide it up into equal sections. So notice that these marks on the side here where the numbers on a clock would be, like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 3 o'clock. Notice that those are evenly spaced out. So if we took a segment and drew a line from each of those to the center, then we would actually have our circle divided up into equal segments or sections.
So just like on a clock, and we notice um, now how many sections there are. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now we have twelve equal sections. I'm just going to take a crayon and color in those sections to make them easier to see. So here we have one red section, and then over here now we have two blue sections. And for green, we have one, two, three, four, five. And then yellow is our last section. One, two, three, four. If you don't have crayons or something to write those, draw those colors in, you could also use the letters like this put a Y in each section and put the letter of the color. All right, let's go back and answer our questions now. The probability for getting a red. There is one red section and there are how many total sections? We counted and there were 12. So the probability of landing on red is 1 12th. The probability of landing on blue. There are two blue sections and there are 12 total sections. That can be simplified, and the answer is 1 sixth. Complete the rest of the page. Pause the video, and when you're ready, resume the video, and we'll check your answers. Question C. The probability of getting green is 5 out of 12. Question D. The probability of getting yellow is four twelfths or one third. Question five is to complete the table of probabilities. So we have one twelfth, one sixth, five twelfths, and one third. Question six, the probability that the pointer stops in either the blue region or the green region. So you count the blue is one sixth, the green is five twelfths. The probability that one or the other happens is the sum of those two fractions, which is seven twelfths. Question seven, the probability that the pointer does not stop in the green region. So we find the probability of stopping in green and we subtract it from one. And the answer is 7 twelfths. In this lesson, you have learned, in a probability experiment, when the outcomes are not known to be equally likely, the formula for the probability of an event does not necessarily apply. So this is when they are equally likely. The probability of an event is the number of outcomes divided by the number of outcomes in the sample space. If they're not equally likely, you cannot use that format. For example, to find the probability that a score is greater than 3, add the probabilities of all the scores that are greater than 3. Also, to find the probability of not getting a score of 3, calculate 1 minus the probability of getting a 3. And that summarizes Lesson 5.